What's up? My name is Techno, but here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize not only your PC, but also Battlefield 2042 now that it's fully released. So before we begin, there'll be absolutely no snake oil in this video. Of course, all of the changes that you see will of course help you get higher FPS in game, whether it's a few or a heck ton more. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and begin. First of all, before we get to any kind of optimization, it's a very good idea to make sure that your Windows is up to date and of course your graphics card driver as well. Head across to NVIDIA or AMD's website, linked it down below, and download and then install the latest graphics driver for your computer. Then of course, if you haven't already, make sure your Windows is up to date fully using Windows Update. Super simple, so I won't go through that here. If you own the game on Steam, all you have to do is select Battlefield 2042, right click, hover over Manage, and then click Browse Local Files. Inside of this new window that pops up, all we have to do is right-click bf2042.exe, unless you're using the trial, in which case you'll be right-clicking the trial here, and then click Properties. Then, inside of this window, on the Compatibility tab, make sure to tick Disable Full Screen Optimizations, then click Change High DPI Settings, and inside of here, tick this box, select Application, OK, Apply, and OK, then click at the very top here, and we'll be copying this address. Now, this is incredibly important, especially if you're on a laptop or a computer with multiple GPUs. Hit Start and type in GPU, then open Graphics Settings. Inside of here, make sure Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling is turned on, then under Graphics Performance Preference, make sure you have Desktop App selected, then click Browse. Click at the very top and paste in the address, then hit Enter to go to this folder. Then double-click bf2042.exe, or once again, the trial version if you're using the trial, and then it should appear on the list here. Click Options, and then change it from Let Windows Decide to High Performance, and click Save. This is incredibly important, especially on a laptop or a PC with more than one graphics card. Then we'll be hitting the Back button, Home, then click the Gaming button, and on the Xbox Game Bar tab, make sure to turn this off unless you actually use some of the features here. Then head across to Game Mode and make sure that this is turned on as it'll give you a couple extra FPS. If you have used the Game Bar in the past, it's a good idea to disable the clip capture as quietly recording in the background all the time will drop your FPS, especially if you record on top of that with something like OBS, etc. You can open the Game Bar with Start and G, or you can manually open it yourself Xbox Game Bar. Inside of here, I'll head across to Settings, Capturing, and then make sure that this is turned off here. Record in the background while I'm playing a game. This is of course only if you have the Game Bar installed. Now let's go ahead and do some general cleaning on our computer, which is always a good idea. The more hard drive space you have, especially if you're really low on it, the better the FPS you can get. The same applies for SSDs. Head Start, and we'll type in Cleanup, where we'll run this cleanup as administrator. Select C drive, the one with Windows, and then click OK. Wait for it to scan, and after it's scanned all the files on your computer, the temporary ones, you see a list of them here. I usually take absolutely everything except for a cycle bin, which I manually clean afterwards, and thumbnails down here, as I use tons of images on my PC, I don't want to wait for the thumbnails to regenerate. So with these two unchecked here, you should be able to select everything else, all of these temporary files, and then click OK, then delete files. Upon doing so, it'll delete all of these temporary files off of your computer, saving you a couple of megabytes to a couple of gigabytes. This is especially useful if you've only got a tiny bit of hard drive space left. On top of this, if you're installing the game to a different drive, simply relaunch it as admin, then select D drive, E drive, or whatever drive it is, instead of C, and go through the exact same steps here. Now, of course, something else you probably know by now is your computer has a limited amount of resources. The more programs running in the background, the fewer the FPS you'll actually get in-game. Hold Control Shift and press Escape to open up the Windows Task Manager. You'll obviously want to close as many applications here as possible that you're not immediately using. Sort by CPU, GPU, and of course, memory over here, allowing the game to take up more resources. Then head across to the Startup tab, sort by status, and everything that's listed as enabled will start up when your computer boots up and logs in. It's a good idea to right-click and disable anything unnecessary here, as it's one less thing to close, and it should even improve your startup time. If you're really advanced and quite a techie, head across to the Services tab, Open Services at the very bottom, and inside of here we'll be doing something similar. Sort by startup type, and everything listed as automatic starts up with your computer. You can double click on something and change it from automatic to manual or even disabled. Manual only lets it run when you open up an application that needs it 
and disabled is not letting it run at all. By doing so, you can really optimize what processes start up with your computer, allowing it to start up faster and leaving more available for Battlefield 2042. On top of this, if you use a large number of overlays, Discord, Steam, etc, etc, every overlay that you have running will take away some of your performance, so it's a good idea to turn them down and run as few as possible. If you're running really short on GPU power while your CPU is running free, all you need to do is head into Discord, Steam, etc, running in the background and disable hardware acceleration. This way they'll use less of your GPU. GPU and more of your CPU instead, balancing things out, allowing you to squeeze a tiny bit of extra performance out of Battlefield 2042. On top of this, some laptops don't work very well with the internal display and their dedicated graphics cards, and they'll get much better FPS when an external monitor is plugged in and used instead for the game. So before we actually fire up the game, there's a couple of options that we should change on our computer. Though of course, you should have launched the game at least once by now, got to the main menu, and quit out of it, just to generate all of the files. First of all, open up a new file browser, and navigate into your documents. Then open up Battlefield 2042, and open up the settings folder here. Then we'll see prof save underscore profile. Open this up with a program like Notepad or Notepad++ and I'll be scrolling all the way down to the bottom until we see gst.render.ambient occlusion, whatever it's set to here. We'll be replacing all of the settings from here down to the end with a file in the description down below. Simply download this file and open it up in another text editor right next to your current one. Basically, there's a couple of options in here and I'll be tweaking things here for much better FPS. Before you do go ahead, copy and paste and replace all of this text here from ambient occlusion down, there's a couple of things you want to make note of. You may want to open up a new text document just to save these variables. You'll be looking for GST render dot field of view if you've customized this in game, do make sure to save these settings here. Then scrolling all the way down, you'll want to take note of your resolution width and resolution height. On top of this, we'll be changing a couple of settings, including resolution hertz, which you'll need to change to match your monitor, whether that's 144, 165, 360, 240, whatever the hertz of your monitor is, you'll need to come back down here in just a moment. Opening up that text file from the description down below, simply copy all of the text, and then we'll be selecting and replacing all of the options here from ambient occlusion down to the very bottom. Hit Control S to save, then you can close and head back a folder. We'll then be opening up the cache folder here, where we'll be hitting Control A to select everything, and then delete to clear it out. We're clearing the cache here, just so that everything is regenerated when we next launch up the game, all shader cache, etc, etc. It's a good idea to do this if you're experiencing stuttering, FPS loss, and other things like that, but because we're going to be changing a ton of settings, it's a good idea to clear out the cache, just to leave nothing left from before. Of course, this will take some time. There we go. Now we can actually fire up the game itself. When you get to the main menu, you'll need to hit O on your keyboard to bring up the options, or you can click accessibility in the bottom left. Then, while on the accessibility tab, before we get to optimizing our actual display, there's a couple of settings that we need to change. Number one, motion blur, absolutely push this all the way down to zero if it's not already. Then you'll also see crosshair projection, turn this to off, this way your crosshair will actually be in the center of your screen instead of placed differently to lessen motion sickness or something or other. Then head across to mouse and keyboard, global, and turn on mouse raw input here if it's not already on. Then we can head across to the display tab at the very top and start with the meat of this optimization. So because this game is pretty terribly optimized at the time of release, you aren't going to gain a huge amount from this, or rather you will, though turning up options you'll see is pretty much pointless at this point in time, we're just going to be pushing everything down to the lowest possible effectively. Anyways, screen setup, make sure that full screen mode is set to full screen, full screen resolution is set to the resolution that matches your display, anything else or an unsupported resolution will end up blurry. Refresh rate should also match the refresh rate of your screen, whether it's 144, 240, 360, etc. Field of view is personal preference. Scrolling down to graphic settings, brightness and high dynamic range are also personal preference. Then we get to these options here that you should just turn motion blur to zero, chromatic aberration, film grain, vignette and lens distortion all off. Then scroll down to graphics preset. In here, all you really want to do is set everything down to low as this game is terribly optimized at the time of release. So pretty much to what you see here. There's not really anything in here that we can raise that'll actually have any sort of meaning. You really just want as much FPS out of this game as it's not well optimized at this current point in time. I would assume that on graphics cards with much better VRAM, you can turn up texture quality over here. Other than that, you do really want to keep everything down as low as possible. 
Scrolling down to advanced, dynamic resolution scale should be turned off, leave this as is. DLSS is something you can use if you don't mind your game being slightly blurrier if you have an RTX 2030 etc graphics card. This is something I don't have the pleasure of testing, so I'm not able to tell you what it runs like here, but I would assume that it gives you a real big boost in FPS for not too much quality loss. Then ray traced ambient occlusion off, because ray tracing at this current point in time does nothing but steal your FPS. Nvidia Reflex low latency should be enabled or enabled plus boost if you have an Nvidia graphics card. Some older graphics cards may have issues with this, though then they'll definitely have issues with the game to begin with. Future frame rendering should be set to on, vertical sync off, and high fidelity object demand all the way down to low. Then that's really about it for this video for now, there's not too much else to add. But anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, hopefully you found this video useful, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!